The Treaty of Versailles tried to put a limit on the power of Germany. In 1919, the treaty was signed. When countries sign a treaty, or when leaders sign a treaty, the aim is to try and bring the community together, to try and stay away from having a possibility of more bloodshed or more war. The Treaty of Versailles, until today, what's it called? It's called the War Guilt Treaty. It was a treaty that was enacted because of what Germany had done in World War I. It was a limitation on Germany's power. What did the treaty say? That Germany could no longer make these alliances with others, which makes it more powerful for itself. That Germany, number two, would not invade other countries like it had done in World War I. That number three, Germany would have a disarmament that these weapons that Germany has, there would be a stop to these weapons. Number four, that Germany would have reparations that it would have to pay back. 6.6 6 billion pounds was owed because of World War I. Germany had to make sure that all of these were paid back. You found that all of these were in the Treaty of Versailles. Who broke them? Hitler. When he broke them, it led to the Holocaust. How? Hitler turned around. He looked at the Treaty of Versailles when he saw it. What did he say? Why should I follow this treaty? Each one of the terms of the treaty, I'm going to break. What did he break? Number one, he was not allowed to make an alliance with another country. Straight away, he made an alliance with Austria. Made him more powerful. Because you all know, Hitler's origin was where? Austria. As in many people will turn around and say, Hitler's German. His origin of birth is where? Austria. The first line in the Treaty of Versailles was that you're not meant to make any more alliances. Hitler straight away made an alliance with Austria, number one. Number two, you don't invade any other country. You've signed this. This is meant to be honored. Did Hitler invade any other country? Straight away, he went and invaded Poland. Okay. Number two, when he invaded Poland, number three, you have reparations to pay. Germany has reparations to pay. And these reparations, which have to be paid, have to be paid continuously because of what Germany done in World War I. 6.6 .6 billion pounds had to be repaid by Germany. Hitler said, forget reparations, we're not paying anything back. And who's going to try and stop me? One by one in this treaty, I'm going to break it down. Further than that, you don't build your army. So what do you mean, don't build my army? He remilitarized the Rhineland. He continued to build his army. The whole of the Treaty of Versailles was what? Was completely ripped apart. That treaty, when it was ripped apart, you found that it led to the Holocaust. Why? Because now Hitler knew, I've invaded Poland. And not only have I invaded Poland, I've also made an alliance with Austria. At the same time, nobody can ask me for money. I'll continue to build my money. From then onwards, there is no Jew who's going to stand in my way. I'll persecute the Jewish community. I'll do whatever I want to them. Burn their synagogues. Break their businesses. The moment that treaty was destroyed, it led to what took place at Holocaust. Likewise with Yazid, the treaty Muawiyah, his father, had signed with Imam Al-Hasan alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Imam al-Hassan and Muawiyah had a treaty with each other. Treaty of Versailles led to the Holocaust because it was broken. Treaty of Imam al-Hassan with Muawiyah, the moment each clause was broken, Karbala was moments away. What were the clauses in the treaty of Imam al-Hassan with Muawiyah? Number one, you stop the cursing of my father from the pulpits. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, every Friday, from the 40th year after Hijrah, for 50 years, was cursed every time in the Friday prayer. Yes. Children were brought up hating Imam Ali alayhi salam, hating his sons. Mughira bin Shu'ba, and who? Subhanallah, Ziyad bin Abi, the illegitimate son of Abu Sufyan, would come on the Friday prayers, and they would curse Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam al Hassan with Muawiyah, he made it clear. He said to Muawiyah, if we're going to have a treaty of peace between us, then the first condition is 
that you stop the cursing of my father from the pump heads. I ask all of you, did he stop the cursing? Not even stop the cursing. Even you find in books of non-Shia that the cursing did not stop. The cursing had continued to the extent that there are people who come years later who are asked to curse Ali, son of Abu Talib. Therefore, the first condition of the treaty, they made sure was broken. Second condition, that you do not kill the Shia of my father. Okay. Second condition, that my father has a group of followers they are known as Shia Ali, the Shia of Ali. They are the likes of who? Hujr bin Adi, Rashid al Hajari, Amr bin Hamak al Khuzai, others such as Maytham al Tamar, others who, for example, were alive from the companions of Ahl al Bayt. These Shia of Ali, you do not kill them. If we're going to sign a treaty with each other, then you leave the Shia. Why? Because he had persecuted the Shia. He had drawn a line in this treaty. Did Muawiyah stop the killing of the Shia of Ali? Not at all. Muawiyah continued to kill the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam. Hujr bin Adi killed by Muawiyah. Amr bin Hamak al-Khuzai head paraded by Muawiyah. Rushad al-Hajari killed by Muawiyah. Others of the Shia of Imam Ali alayhi salam massacred one after the other. That was number two. The third point in the treaty. What was it? You do not change the sunnah of my holy, my grandfather, peace be upon his family. You do not change that sunnah. Did he change the sunnah of Rasulullah or no? Many areas Muawiyah changed the sunnah of the holy prophet, peace be upon his family. To the extent that one narrator says they even prayed Salat al-Jum'ah on a Wednesday. Tell me, why is it called Jum'ah if we're praying it on a Wednesday? As in if the Salah is called Jum'ah, why am I praying it on the Wednesday? Amongst other areas where he changed the Sunnah completely. But number four, what was the fourth term of the treaty between Imam Al-Hasan and Muawiyah? The fourth term was that you, after you die, the leadership comes back to me if I am alive. And if I am not alive, who does the leadership go to? Who does it go to if I am not alive? Imam al Hussein. That was the fourth condition in the treaty. Look at the treaty of Versailles and the treaty with Muawiyah and Imam al Hassan. The fourth condition, after I die or you die, it comes to me. If I'm not alive, who does it go to? Imam al Hussein. Muawiyah just before he died. If you notice, Imam al Hussein lived with Muawiyah for 10 years as Imam. Never once did Imam al Hussein fight Muawiyah. He began to speak out when each term of the treaty was being broken. Because Imam al Hussein realized that this is only going to head in one direction. This person has signed a treaty with us. He's broken each one of the treaty. When you begin to break treaties, your arrogance becomes at a level where now you think that I can just destroy anyone. As in when Hitler invaded Poland, he said, what are you going to do about it? When Hitler made an alliance with Austria, he said, what are you going to do about it? When Hitler stopped paying by what I... Likewise, Muawiyah said, I'll kill the Shia. What are you going to do about it? And I'll change the Sunnah. What are you going to do about it? And likewise, I will curse your father every week. What will you do about it? Look how he kept on telling Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein, not once did he reply back to him. Until when? Until Muawiyah broke the last term of the treaty. What was it? That after you die... It comes to Imam al Hassan. Okay, Imam al Hassan died 11 years before Karbala. Not one year or two years. Imam al Hussein was an Imam of Ahl al Bayt for years before Karbala happened. Imam al Hassan died. Okay, as Imam al Hassan died, Muawiyah, now I'm alive. I'm going to wait for you because you're not dead yet. I'll wait until it comes near your death and we'll see. Muawiyah, when it came near his death, he made it clear to everybody. That I announce for all of you, Yazid, my son, will be my successor. People turn around and said, but wait, there's a treaty. Like they told Hitler, you have a treaty of Versailles that's signed. You signed a treaty with us. Likewise, they said to Muawiyah, but there's a treaty. It says that after you die, you give it to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hassan and Imam al Hussein both knew he wouldn't. But you could not expose him. Unless you make a treaty and then you expose his character. How did Rasulullah make the Hudaybiyah treaty? 
He said, these Quraysh, when his companion said, let's kill them. He said, no, 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 relax. Let's do a treaty with them. You'll see their hypocrisy from the treaty. That they'll break the terms of the treaty. Likewise, Muawiyah appointed who? Muawiyah appointed Yazid. The moment Muawiyah appointed Yazid, the last term of the treaty was broken. Imam al Hussein said, a man like me does not pledge allegiance to a man like you. No chance. We signed a treaty with you. And we asked you to honor that treaty. Now that you've broken all the terms of the treaty, there is no way whatsoever that you're going to have people like us pledge allegiance to you. Therefore, the second similarity between the Holocaust and Karbala, two treaties were broken. The third similarity, that there were people who paved the way for the Holocaust and Karbala to happen. What do I mean? Hitler could not do the Holocaust by himself. Do you agree? Can one man kill that many millions of people in, by himself? I ask all of you. Can one man send that many people to Auschwitz and see them burn and die? Can one man collect all of those ladies and all of those children? Can one man go towards Austria and go towards Poland and go towards other parts of Europe and leave a dominant effect? No way. There are those who paved the way for him to dominate. Who were they? You find, for example, somebody like Paul von Hindenburg, who said that I will never allow Hitler to take a post. And then when it looked better for him, he said, here, Hitler, have this post. Had someone like Paul von Hindenburg stood up and said, for example, that I will not allow this man to come into power, a man like you does not deserve to be at the helm of this great country. Germany should not have someone who's a fascist or who's a racist like you are. Not just a racist towards the Jews, by the way. A racist towards the communists. A racist towards Jehovah Witnesses. A racist towards the black community at the time as well. As many of you would have seen when the Olympics was taking place. The racism that he had against black athletes as well. But Paul von Hindenburg just stepped aside. Had he stopped Hitler from becoming chancellor, from having those positions, Hitler could never be there. But when oppressors rise, it's because of the silence of the good people. Yes, the silence of the good. That's why an oppressor rises. Had he stood up and said, you can't, the Holocaust would not have happened. Likewise, Hitler needed men around him who could support his ideology. Like who? Many of you would have studied Joseph Goebbels, for example. Or others would have studied people like Goering. These people were parts of the Nazi party. They needed to write the hadith to justify his position. Do you know where I'm heading? Yes. They needed to write hadiths for Hitler. That Hitler loves Germany. That Hitler wants the best for Germany. That the Aryan race is the greatest race. And that it should be honored and it should be protected. Hitler does not emerge. There are those who paved the way for Hitler to dominate. Likewise, said Zainab said to Yazid and Shah, those who paved the way for you to dominate over us. Yazid, what you did at Karbala wasn't just you. It was paved many years before you. Yes. Yazid could not have done what he did at Karbala, no Hitler could have done what he'd done with the Holocaust if it wasn't for those who paved the way for Yazid. Who paved the way for Yazid? 